right, welcome, welcome, folks. I see uh, people rolling in, which is really exciting. Happy to be here uh, this morning for me uh, in California. <clears> hey, <throat> okay. I'm going to give a couple more seconds for people to roll in, so we can, uh, you know, make sure everybody can uh, in enjoy the entire presentation. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. That's perfect. All right, folks. Um, so, hello and good morning or afternoon, to, uh, depending on where you are in the world. My name is uh, Jonathan Lacour. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Mission. Uh, we'll do some introductions to Mission in a little bit. Um, but the topic of today's kind of conversation is cloud security in a changing world. Um, and also, apparently, uh, the doorbell rang at my house, and so my dogs are going crazy. So this is this is part of the world that we live in right now. Um, and I'm joined today uh, by Brendan Stavely, who's a uh, security principal at Amazon Web Services, and uh, by Dan Webb, who is the VP of Partner Sales and Alliances at Alert Logic. Um, and before we dive in, uh, I want to do a little kind of housekeeping and, and tell you a little bit about uh, kind of today's conversation. Um, so you will notice in the GoToWebinar kind of uh, interface, um, there is a spot called Chat. Um, and we will try to monitor that and look for uh, any questions that you might have along the way or commentary. Um, and in addition, there's a section called questions and you can add questions there. And as we go through the presentation, we'll monitor that as well and, and try to answer those either as we go or at the end when we'll have a lot more time for Q&A. So if you have a question, go ahead and load it into the questions area or into the chat and we'll address it as soon as we can. And the last thing I'll mention is there is a section called handouts and there's some really good information in there for you to download and take home with yourself uh, and uh, read after we're done with the presentation. So with all of that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so uh, first and foremost, we wanna uh, introduce, introduce you to who Mission is. Um, so uh, Mission is an AWS premier consulting partner and uh, that is uh, AWS's highest tier of uh, partner. And that means that we're vetted and validated and verified by AWS based upon all of our actual work and case studies, uh, our, our other competencies that we have. Uh, and that means we have a very high level experience in, in working with AWS environments. And we are 100% focused on AWS. Uh, we don't work with any other environments or clouds. Uh, we're very familiar with them because we have to frequently do migrations into AWS, but we're all in on AWS and focused there. Um, in addition, we have a whole bunch of designations and competencies. Uh, and you can see them there. I won't go into too much detail. Um, some of the ones that are uh, important to understand is we're also a managed service provider. Um, so we can actually manage your environment. Uh, and we also have a service in conjunction with Alert Logic, which goes a layer deeper and really helps you manage your uh, kind of security posture. And we'll talk about that a bit later. You also see there that uh, we are regularly audited against the SOC 2 Type 2 controls um, and also ISO 27001. So uh, we're, we're all in on the security topic as well. Um, so I'll now pass it over to Dan and let him uh, talk a little bit about himself and Alert Logic. Thanks, Jonathan. So hi, everybody. Dan Webb here. As Jonathan mentioned, I'm the Vice President of Global Partner Sales and Alliances with Alert Logic. Uh, just starting my eighth year with Alert Logic. In fact, it was my anniversary uh, last week. So it's been a, a long ride, a uh, long fun ride, should I say? <laughs> Not just a long ride. Um, spent the entirety of that time collaborating with AWS. So um, really seeing the good, the bad, and the ugly as customers have made the leap to the cloud and, and tried to understand how they're you know, best set up to address their share of security responsibilities and really kind of unleash the full potential of the AWS cloud, and obviously been uh, actively working with AWS's partner ecosystem that whole time too. Um, so a little bit about Alert Logic. We're a 20-year-old um, ISV in the security segment. We're in the space now referred to as managed detection and response. As the name suggests, we really provide uh, capabilities that deliver security outcomes to our customers by combining technology that allows us to ingest data and see a wide range of threats that could be impacting a customer, use our own analytics capabilities to then you know, really analyze that data set to determine if something is an active threat that the customer needs to do something about, and then leveraging our deep uh, expertise around security and AWS security specifically, uh, which is provided by about 150 or so security experts in our business who sit in our security operations centers in the US and EMEA, to really translate that information into an action that a customer needs to take via an escalation that we provide to them either directly 
or is it uh, in the case of Mission MDR in collaboration with our partners who then add and extend our value to help customers respond in a timely fashion to those threats. Uh, we've also been part of the AWS ecosystem um, and the APN since its inception, hold a number of competencies in the security and containers area, uh, and really kind of view ourselves as the leader uh, in managed detection and response for customers on their cloud journey. So regardless of what stage they're at, we really believe we can be a true enabler of cloud success by helping them address their security challenges. And uh, we're not the only people that feel that way. Uh, Forrester, as an example, uh, have been uh, crowning us as the leader in the MSSP space uh, as it relates to cloud, cl cloud for some time now, uh, and have mentioned that we continue to run rings around the competition, uh, and long may that continue. So thanks for having us, Jonathan. Absolutely, and I will uh, uh, pour the praise on Alert Logic as well. They've been an incredible partner to us, uh, and there's no question that the depth of expertise and security is just phenomenal with uh, Alert Logic. So. <laughs> Uh, and with that, uh, I really wanted quickly to provide some context around uh, why this webinar came about. Um, so, uh, you know, we want you to understand kind of the context for the, uh, the conversation. And um, as you might know, uh, security incidents are incredibly uh, on the rise, right? And we've seen a lot of ransomware attacks. Uh, they're over 100% up since COVID-19. Um, and there's a lot of attackers targeting kind of small to medium sized businesses because there's a kind of this notion that they maybe don't have as strong a strong security posture. They don't have the, the staff in house and the budgets compared to large companies to really, um, you know, resource against uh, security attacks. Um, and, you know, you've seen a lot of uh, news recently, SolarWinds, uh, just this week we heard about Ubiquity, um, which has been a, a pretty significant uh, uh, security situation. and um, you know, I think uh, it's clear that the context for this is that it's uh, it's something that we all need to have top of mind. Uh, and and why why this format? Well, we want to uh, really educate uh, everyone about AWS security best practices, uh, and also give you an idea about if you are in that situation where you don't have all the capabilities in house, how you can leverage services and partners, both AWS native. Um, you know, partners like Mission and services like Alert Logic to really uh, drive your security posture. Um, so that's really the context for the conversation. So now uh, we've set the context, let's talk a little bit about the agenda today. So um, we're gonna go through kind of the top 10 uh, security focus areas in 2021. Uh, and we're gonna give an overview of the AWS shared responsibility model, which is a really critical thing to understand um, when you're you know, kind of understanding what your security posture is like on AWS. We'll talk about the different stages of cloud maturity and how they correlate with different security offerings. Uh, and finally, we will have some information about how Mission uh, kind of fits into this along with Alert Logic. Um, and uh, again, we will absolutely have some time for Q&A and please queue those questions up and go to, go to webinar interface. Um, here we go. So uh, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, hand it off to Brendan, uh, who's gonna talk about the top 10 2021 security focus areas for each security group. Good stuff. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, and you're driving, right, on the slides? Gotcha. So you can uh, go ahead and advance to um, awesome. my presentation. Uh, folks, I just wanted to say uh, it's a pleasure to, to meet with you, and I really appreciate the fact that everybody that's participating in this webinar has decided to invest an hour of time with the group here today. And we really much appreciate your making that investment. And from our perspective, it's a valuable investment of your time that we intend to pay a handsome return on. And let me describe why. The object of our webinar today is that it's a lofty goal, and I encourage feedback if you think we're on track or not as the webinar progresses, but our objective is that at the end of the webinar, in 51 minutes from now, everybody that participates is going to be better at your job as it relates to securing workloads in AWS than you are right now. Now we have a bunch of tips and tricks we're gonna share, a bunch of resources and a bunch of tooling and, and, and other options, as well as a call to action. And the Mission Cloud Alert Logic and AWS Teams are all supremely confident we're in a position to deliver that return because we appreciate the fact that you've invested this time. Um, now my job at AWS is I represent our native security services. Another way I like to characterize what I do is I help customers avoid and limit the impact of security incidents in their environment by sharing the various tools that we have available to help you enrich your security posture on the platform and also to work with customers around best, best practices and implementing those in your cloud environment. Now, I always like to start with this slide 
from Andy Jassy, who was actually recently named um, the future CEO of all of Amazon, but has been the CEO of AWS for some time. Uh, security and operational excellence or job zero. Now, I actually, I've only been at AWS maybe seven or eight months, but I had the opportunity to participate in an all hands type session that Andy spoke at. And one of the questions from the session I thought was really interesting. Somebody said, Andy, if you could only have one priority for AWS, what's your one priority? And his answer really struck me. The first thing he said is, well, that's a very difficult question because I have a lot of priorities and they're very important and it's tough to pick one. But if you force me to pick one, it would be security. Now, what he said next really I thought was remarkable. He said, if we don't do security right, we don't have a company. That really struck me. Now, first of all, it's great as somebody who's representing security services and helping customers avoid incidents and prevent the impact of incidents. It's great to have the kind of air cover when your CEO is saying, hey, this is the number one thing that we're working on, right? Because it's wonderful. But the other thing that I it just, it struck me, at least how it spoke to me, resonated with me, is that there was a lot of empathy in that comment. We realized that this is a very difficult problem to solve. And especially if you look at what's been happening lately, the ubiquity uh, uh, incident that's just kind of being surfaced now, you know, SolarWinds, Microsoft Exchange, et cetera, like some of the companies that you'd argue are best equipped to protect themselves have encountered security incidents. It's a very, very difficult problem. And then as a predominant cloud provider, we wanna make sure we're putting our customers in a position to have a strong security posture on AWS and to make that as easy as possible for you to implement. And that's what we've really tried to do. But I think you'll find as we go through, we recognize that we're really in this with our customers together to try and solve this common problem that, that we combat as well. Obviously it's a very important item for us uh, and, and we're, we're combating it with you and, and hopefully giving you the tooling to complement the process and tech uh, people uh, to, to put yourself in a position to secure all your workloads in a very robust manner on AWS. Now, if you go to the next slide, um, what I'm gonna show here, if you can uh, advance, Jonathan. So this is a top 10 list from our chief information security officer, a gentleman named Steve Schmidt. And he presented this uh, pretty recently at the Virtual Reinvent Conference, which is our customer conference. And how he derived this list, and there's actually a similar list because he started doing this a year ago. So we have two, uh, we have a total of 20. Um, we basically gather all the information from all the times customers have raised their hand and said, hey, we need help with a security incident. We have some incident response stuff. We have a team that handles that and we get engaged with customers occasionally and, uh, and, and, and sort of understand what, what happened and how it happened, et cetera. And then based on that, Steve and his team has curated these uh, these two top 10 lists that are sort of incremental, so the top 20. And some of them are very specific from a technology perspective, and some of them are more strategic, like um, uh, diverse hiring and training, for example. Now, the reason I wanted to highlight this, uh, this particular uh, slide is because we often interact with customers to kind of coach on, you know, here's uh, security best practices in the cloud, and that's something that Mission Cloud and Alert Logic have a great practice in doing as well. And we really think it's important to, to focus on some of these best practices and uh, learn from, I hate to say the mistakes of the past, but learn from kind of the collection of incidents that we have exposure to as a big cloud provider in terms of where you direct and instruct your cloud investments. Now, Steve is also very important, not only for being our CISO, but he's also the de facto head of our security business unit. So in other words, many of the security services that me and my team represent are actually developed and maintained by Steve's group. Now that's an unusual um, that's an unusual arrangement. Usually you don't have CISOs that also are a business owner in that form. But the reason that it evolved in that way is that many of the tools that I'll go into in a second were actually developed by Steve's team as we went to try and protect AWS's platform. And so his engineers were the ones that developed them to help secure AWS as tools that homegrown tools that we use. And we realized, you know what, there's commercial viability here. Our customers can benefit from this too. So we productize them into services that, that we offer now. Um, and if you go into the next slide, Jonathan, we'll continue down that uh, vein uh, because Steve also, and this is Steve Schmidt here, our, our CISO, our customer trust is our top priority. And obviously everybody cares about security and data privacy. And that's why we built the portfolio that we've uh, that we built uh, uh, built today. But before I get into the portfolio, I really did want to take a minute to go through the shared responsibility model, which Jonathan will be in in the next slide. Now, as a cloud provider, 
Um, and, and I love to have discussions with customers and partners and anybody who will talk to me about whether is it easier to secure workloads in a public cloud than it is on-prem. I have a strong opinion that I believe it's definitely easier to secure a workload on a public cloud than it is on-prem. And part of the reason is you inherit what we call security of the cloud. So any customer that runs on AWS, they don't need to worry about protecting the physical infrastructure, which is important from an on-prem perspective. They don't need to worry about the, you know, the storage, compute, uh, database, et cetera. All of those components we are responsible for securing, and we offload that burden from you. However, there is still a fairly substantive burden on top of that, because I mentioned this is a very difficult problem to solve, and we have empathy for our customers that are trying to do that. There's a whole bunch of stuff that customers need to do to run securely on AWS. And, and that's the security in the cloud. And that is the customer responsibility. Now, if you go to the next slide, Jonathan, we've, we've really tried hard in the security in the cloud or the customer responsibility, again, to make it as easy as possible to put you in a position to deliver a really robust security architecture. Uh, I love this guy, Warner Vogels. He's a funny guy to um, interact with, but he likes to say, dance like nobody's watching, encrypt like everyone is. Encryption is a great example. We are a big believer that you should encrypt everything you possibly can. And we have tools that we built into the platform to make it as easy as possible to encrypt data at rest, in transit, and in use. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you'll see some of the things that are still required, like encryption, of the in the cloud. And if you build this out, I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. This is a lot. Even though the of the cloud part is taken care of, you don't need to worry about, you know, making sure your network infrastructure is secure and locking the doors and having surveillance and all that. There's still a lot from vulnerability management. I mean, threat detection and response, that bucket in and of itself is a full-time job, right? Um, and so all these are requirements that, uh, although we have the strong platform that we believe is robust and has a great track record from a security perspective, knock on wood, customers uh, need to deliver on this. Now, you have some companies that are in a position to execute on all these with the staff they have. And like I say, business outcomes are delivered not by technology. It's a combination of technology with people and process. We can provide the technology part. The people and process part, we can guide on the process part, but fundamentally that is uh, customer responsibility. However, knowing that this is a very difficult problem to solve, recognizing that we have a lot of empathy for our customers in trying to address this big issue, we put together a portfolio of services that are built into the AWS platform, thank you, Jonathan, um, that, that uh, are all natively built in to help you uh, address some of those security requirements that are in the cloud to make it simpler. So for example, encryption is something I'm a big fan of. I feel like everybody be should, should doing encryption. Um, we have services here, KMS and Cloud HSM, that basically speed up and, and uh, accelerate your ability to encrypt data on AWS. Um, now, before I go farther in this slide, I just wanna take a step back. Uh, there is a government institution called NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, I think is the acronym. And they have produced a framework called the Cybersecurity Framework. It's the most widely adopted by a wide margin, at least in the US, certainly the most widely adopted framework um, it, from an information security perspective. And it basically has five kind of domains, right? Identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. So what we've done, because we have a lot of services that we've uh, built into the platform to help customers with that security in the cloud, is we basically overlaid the portfolio against those domains of the NIST cybersecurity framework as a way to um, compartmentalize and, 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 and organize these different services. So I'm just gonna pull out a few in the interest of time. Of course, happy to talk about any of these if anyone has any specific questions. Actually, you can go back just one more slide, Jonathan, that'd be great. Um, I'm gonna go uh, the other way. Uh, I'm gonna go back, uh, pull, pull a few of these out here. Um, so for example, in the threat detection and monitoring section of the what requirements of customers of security in the cloud, in the detect framework of NIST, you'll see some really, really critical services, right? So for example, Amazon Guard Duty is a 24 seven threat monitoring solution. So this is the parallel on-prem environment would be something like an IDS or, or, or something along the, those lines. Um, threat monitoring is an essential uh, activity and capability within AWS. I don't much mind if customers choose to use other products to do the threat monitoring, but we believe passionately that some, somebody should be monitoring for threats in your AWS environment. So we developed Guard Duty. That is one of those services that Steve Schmidt's engineers developed in-house so we can monitor our own AWS environment. 
uh, and then we commercialize that, productize it, and release it to market. This has been out for a couple of years, and it does come with a 30-day free trial. So I would encourage everybody, if you haven't already, just to give it a shot in your AWS environment. Literally, you turn it on with a flip of a switch in the console, and then it's a fully managed service, so no concerns about scaling. It'll just start analyzing different data sources and, and give you threats, both based on specific you know, signatures or, or issues that are known, as well as behavioral anomalies using some machine learning and AI algorithms that we have uh, developed in-house. So really, really great service that helps with that security in the cloud. Otherwise, you have to be sort of carting in a third party, spinning it up on an EC2 instance or something like that, which again, if you've got the, the people to execute on that, great. If not, we think this is just a bit easier that it's natively built in. Um, second thing I'll mention is Security Hub. So Security Hub is a service, it's actually in the slide twice, both in the uh, both in the uh, identify part as well as the detect part. And the reason why Security Hub is sort of two broad functions. So first of all, it extracts all the configuration information of your AWS environment from AWS config. It extracts that information and it compares it in a dashboard against some basic compliance standards. We have a compliance standard called Foundational Security Best Practices. We also support PCI, CIS, and others. And it basically gives you a snapshot of, okay, based on your configuration, you are red, yellow, green against this compliance standard. Um, well, at the same time, and that's why Security Hub is in the identify part, because it's sort of mapping out your assets and what the compliance state is. Within the detect part, Security Hub is also the central dashboard where you can send alerts from your AWS environment. Guard Duty, for example, reports into Security Hub, as do a bunch of the icons that are on the slide. And it will also take in feeds from third-party tools. If you're using those, we've got a bunch of partners that are the who's who in the security industry that also can send findings to Security Hub. So you have that central dashboard of alerts, while at the same time, you have the central dashboard of your compliance status, kind of one right next to the other. So, for example, you might say, hey, I have an S3 bucket where we didn't encrypt. Or something like that and that is a pci look could be a pci issue if there's um uh pci protected data in that s3 bucket while at the same time you're getting an alert from guard duty the guard duty's monitoring s3 it sees some unusual behavior in that specific s3 bucket so the combination of those two is powerful or you could say well that bucket is is encrypted it's not on my vulnerability list from a pci perspective with security hub so the guard duty finding is less interesting so that's another um, service that we brought to market that, again, helps with that in the cloud, which is, again, a very difficult problem to solve. The last thing I'll mention is Detective. Uh, Detective is in between the detect and respond paradigm. And Detective is one of those services that if you have an incident or a potential incident, it allows you to basically dig into that really quickly using some innovative technology we uh, acquired from a great company based in the East Coast a couple of years ago called Squirrel. And it allows you to sort of graphically represent uh, all the data feeds that are coming in to quickly digest exactly what's happening and to kind of build a plan to uh, either uh, alleviate the incident or, or identify that it's a non-incident, right? Now, those three services in combination are a powerful trio. We actually call that trio Protect Your Cloud. And we believe it helps our customers with the security uh, in the cloud. And of course, we've got a whole bunch of other services that I don't have the time to go through today, but myself, uh, the Mission Cloud or the AWS team will be happy to if uh, uh, anyone is interested in, in hearing more about any of these particular services. Now, if you go to the next slide, you have all these tools, right? And all of them natively built in, uh, although they are generally very easy to deploy, although they're, they're sort of, we've made them as intuitive as possible, you really still need people to operate it. I mean, every one of those icons in the last slide, but you can stay here, Jonathan, has, you have to have a person that's doing something to it. Even the configuration might be straightforward, uh, it may be sort of nicely tied in and integrated, and we feel like we've done a good job on that, but you still need that people and that process to operationalize these tools to ultimately deliver the outcome that we all want, which is we limit security incidents or the impact of security incidents. And that's where partners can really help. I mean, I've talked to some of the biggest Fortune 500 type companies out there that have great staff, that really know what they're doing, but they still, uh, there's just not enough hours in the day to really check all the boxes that need to be checked to deliver that robust outcome, which is why in combination with Alert Logic and Mission Cloud, we have opportunities where customers can take it all on if they want to bring your own, bring your own security tools and not use any of the native tools. That's option one. If you've got all the expertise in the world and you've got a big security team that's gonna help you. Option two is to use the native tools because they're easier. Right, the built-in implementation is easy. 
but you have to run them and you have to keep an eye on them and you have to kind of operationalize them into your workflow. That's option two, a little easier than option one, but still a lot. And we go into option three, which is where Mission Cloud and Alert Logic come in, where they can actually offload some of that burden, kind of do some of this stuff for you and ultimately be the people and process part of this very important equation in combination with the tooling uh, to deliver the outcome, which is a more secure enterprise for all customers that are running on AWS. And with that, I'm going to pass the baton to my good friend, Mr. Dan Webb, who's going to go through uh, how Alert Logic can participate uh, in that kind of arrangement. And I'm going to interject before Dan <laughs> takes over, because I think this will be a great time to take a breather and put up our first poll. Um, so uh, the mission marketing folks will put that up right now. Uh, and Dan, then we'll dive right into your section. But uh, you know, this is actually a really good time to think about, um, you know, with those people processes and tools, how many full-time dedicated security professors do you have on your team? Now, I will say this is an entirely anonymous poll, so you can be uh, brutally honest <laughs> and uh, no one will know that it was you. So go ahead and uh, submit those responses and let's uh, see how we go. All right, I see I'm flowing in, flowing in. All right, a little over half of you have voted. I'm gonna give it another five or six seconds. Um, all right. There we go, let's go ahead and close that poll. So look at that. Uh, you can all probably see the, the responses here. It looks like 100% of you have a very, very small team of security professionals. And gosh, uh, I'm really glad you're all here today. <laughs> and uh, with that, let's, let's go ahead and close this out and we'll go to uh, Dan. Uh, thank you for allowing me to interject there. Um, no worries. Fascinating insight we gleaned there, Jonathan. Not unsurprising, given the, the skills gap that we have out there in the market. So uh, you can go ahead and, uh, and, and progress the slides here. So uh, Brendan, thank you for, for teeing this up and doing a great job of uh, you know, really kind of laying the foundations for how organizations should be approaching addressing their security responsibilities as they migrate to the AWS cloud and unlock the full potential that it offers. So I thought I'd kind of zoom back out a little bit and start out with kind of what's going on out there. What are the macro challenges that everybody's facing, quite frankly, before we get into the specifics of the different stages of the cloud journey? So first and foremost, look, digital transformation is an overwhelmingly positive experience for most organizations who go through it and for their customers and all the key stakeholders that get to benefit from all the good that it offers. But it is a transformation and transformation equates to change and change as it relates to security and risk is, is a dangerous thing if you're not you know, prepared for it, right? So I think the key point here is that, you know, make sure as an organization, you're going in eyes wide open, you're aligned as a business, you're understanding how the digital transformation journey you're about to go on or you're midway through going through is gonna impact your ability to secure your organization and help you secure your customers. Uh, worst case scenario is, you know, you go all in and, um, make a significant change to how you operate as a business and security or compliance hasn't had a seat at the table and suddenly you're left in a position where you've uh, created exposure. Uh, we see it still unfortunately happening time and time again. So preparedness and understanding the role uh, security plays in digital transformation is a, a challenge that we'll need to address. Um, as we've kind of highlighted, I think already, you know, there is a, a skills gap out there. Um, you know, we can't turn out uh, cybersecurity talent fast enough to meet the demand that's out there. Uh, we know that firsthand. We're an organization that employs a very large number of security experts and uh, every day is a, a challenge we're facing to keep hold of them because everybody's after them. And, you know, so finding the talent in the first place is difficult. Retaining it is even more difficult. Um, so, you know, clearly understanding whether you as an organization, as a strategy, see it important to have your own security organization within your business and, and that you can go and source and retain that talent. Very important decision point to come to is your at this pivot point and being able to understand how you're going to evolve your business as you go through your, your cloud journey. Um, I'm allowed to say this, I've been in the security industry for 18 years now. Uh, we are part of the problem. We have gone out there and made it so uh, overwhelmingly complex for organizations to understand what is the best practice, what are the right tools and solutions that I can use to really help me address my security responsibilities. Amazon have done a tremendous job of making it simple for organizations in, in understanding their native services and recognizing that those are purpose-built specifically for protecting cloud workloads. So that's that's helping to cut through some of the noise. But the reality is the vast majority of vendors in, the, in, this, uh, in this market are telling a very similar story, but when you kind of dig underneath the hood, it's a very different way of getting there. And you know, ultimately it's overwhelming for customers. So making good decisions becomes harder and harder every year when new vendors pop up, new funding gets uh, assigned and new tools and technologies uh, appear with a supposed silver bullet. 
and then clearly the threat landscape isn't uh, you know staying still, right? I think the the bad guys keep getting better and better. They're using uh, all the same you know, means that we are to you know, positively transform our business. They're leveraging automation. They're building you know ever increasingly sophisticated uh, tools and and you know, means to go and do bad things to your organization. Uh, they're not standing still, and it's becoming an ever more lucrative uh, investment. I think it's already eclipsed any other form of uh, kind of black market activity out there from a revenue generation standpoint. So they're going to keep doing it. They're going to keep getting better and they're going to keep coming after every organization that quite frankly is connected to the internet is a target. So no more of the days of, hey, I'm too small for them to care about. I think you've all seen that play out with you know, ransomware and other types of attack that are truly designed to target smaller organizations and be as disruptive as possible. So threat's going to keep evolving. You need to keep evolving too. You can move on, Jonathan. So as we talk about some of the specifics of addressing security responsibilities, um, you know, all, all organizations are different, but uh, here are you know, a, a subset of challenges that we see people face commonly. Firstly, compliance is, for me, a byproduct of, of doing security well. Uh, I think you know, gone are the days where compliance was the outcome that everyone was dri driving towards. These days, I think most organizations do recognize that security comes first and that enables compliance. But addressing compliance is, again, a, a moving target. I think you know, more mandates come along every year. Uh, obviously, as you move from a traditional uh, approach uh, to uh, infrastructure to a cloud approach, then you obviously need to transform how you're going to go about addressing compliance responsibility shift as you start to you know, take on new providers. So um, it's something that needs continual um, investment and continual thought as to how you're going to evolve your approach to addressing the, the different compliance mandates you have, whether those are internal, you know, industry regulated standards you need to meet, or if you're, uh, you know, uh, which we're seeing increasingly now, being mandated to meet certain compliance requirements by your customers, and they're going to look to come and audit you and, and make sure that you're doing everything you can. Um, if you're in the security business and you're um, responsible for supporting your organization, if you're not aligned to the goals and objectives around cloud adoption and looking for ways to help accelerate towards those outcomes, uh, I would strongly consider you to reconsider you know, your value to the organization. I think one of the days where security is viewed as an insurance policy uh, or a necessary evil, I think now it has to be viewed as an enabler for success, and particularly in the area of digital transformation and cloud adoption. This is where if you play your role correctly and make the right decisions, you can really help the organization get where they're going far faster and become increasingly valuable as maybe um, in the past it's been viewed. Um, detecting and responding to threats is a moving target. Again, um, you know, the threats keep evolving. Um, you know, your ability to get visibility into the infrastructure and the assets that you need to protect and having the means to be able to ingest all the different sources of information uh, to be able to you know, ultimately translate what's happening in your environment into actions you need to take to protect the business, uh, again, is, is a moving target. So making sure that you are future-proofing there uh, and able to have a strategy that's going to last more than you know, six to 12 months. And ultimately, it all boils down to being able to understand and mitigate risk right, at a business level. How do we make sure that the decisions that we want to make that are going to be positive for us, uh, that we understand what the inherent risks are in making those decisions and that we can make them confident that those risks aren't going to derail us as a business? Uh, and be able to have that kind of dialogue uh, with the leadership team of your organization, with your customers, so that uh, when you take the plunge, it's, it's an overwhelmingly positive experience. And all of these challenges, addressing them, really requires you know, investment, both from a a financial standpoint in, in making sure you're making the right purchasing decisions. It requires investment from a resourcing standpoint, and you need to ultimately be able to solve for these challenges 24 7, 365. You can move on, Jonathan. So, as you start to adopt uh, the cloud and really kind of take those first uh, footsteps into uh, embracing AWS and, and all the goodness that comes with it, we see some common challenges and concerns organizations need to kind of work through. The first one predominantly starts with visibility, right? I think typically most organizations are transforming from some form of traditional either data center or kind of hosted platform um, where, you know, assets were things they could go and touch and feel and, you know, they had you know, technology racked up in, in a physical environment that they could go and take a look at or they had started to virtualize that but still, you know, felt like they kind of had complete visibility as they needed it. As you start to move to the cloud, that visibility and the level of visibility you have evolves and changes. So making sure that you can see the operating environment that you're being asked to protect really is kind of rule 101 of security. If you can't see it, you can't protect it. So ensuring that you have that visibility from the jump is, is very, very important. Um, I think the next stage of the journey then is, is really a very honest and heartfelt analysis of your current state and, and you know, how likely that is going to be successful uh, in the cloud. And that's predominantly around the technology investments that you made to protect that data center or that you know, traditional environment, which were very sound decisions, I'm sure, at the time. 
have those technologies evolved to uh, allow them to be viable as you start to move towards the cloud? And even if they have evolved, have they got to a point where they're going to be a better solution for you than, for example, Brendan's plethora of tremendous AWS native security services or other solutions that have been specialized in this area for some time? So, you know, really understanding and doing that analysis. Is this going to be able to come with me? Is it not? Uh, am I going to have a situation where I've got two or three different approaches to solving for the same challenge? That's probably going to be pretty inefficient. Uh, so it's an opportunity in a moment in time as you start to embrace the cloud to you know really kind of push forward with that transformation exercise that might overall be a better outcome for you as a business and then you know really the most difficult piece is do i have the right you know expertise in-house finding folks that are security experts is hard finding cloud security experts is a unicorn hunt for the most part yeah you know, there's not many of those folks out there so you know being able to either develop that skill set in-house uh, is going to require a lot of investment um, or you're going to have to have very deep pockets to hire and, and retain those folks. So making that the kind of you know, basis of a, a business decision that you need to make, yeah, you know, does it make sense for us to look for some help here, uh, particularly around the kind of human resource and expertise side of things uh, as we start to embrace the cloud? You can move forward, Jonathan. So let's talk about the three kind of primary phases of cloud adoption here. So, you know, first phase is migration or launch. It could be the first time you're moving a workload or it could be that you're a new business and you're looking to launch your you know, business around cloud in the first place. But you need to be able to go and safely explore the adoption of cloud services. And again, you know, understanding how that transforms previous approaches to security. For me, this is all about you know, preparedness and planning and alignment, right? And just making sure everybody's aware of what you're going to go do. And that when you do take those first steps that you're de-risking your overall cloud program by making sure that you've got security covered and, and that everybody's kind of bought into how that's going to work as you start to move to the cloud. Um, not doing that typically results in scenarios that can derail the entire program. And if you spent the last six months convincing the business that cloud's the way to go and you fall at the first hurdle, I'm sure not many people are going to be too pleased about that. So yeah, taking this opportunity to recognize the role security plays there and reducing those uh, initial risks, lowering the barrier to success, uh, and making sure that you can go forward and build a strong platform for them. The next phases of the journey, which is where things start to get really exciting. So you've made it to the cloud, excellent. Uh, now what's happened is the business has seen or seen glimpses of the full potential and is looking to take big transformative leaps, going from maybe infrastructure as a service to containerization, or they're going to implement some form of application modernization strategy, or you know even go full force into microservices, serverless. There's all these different ways you can really start to bring significant economies of scale to your business, drive efficiencies, transform customer experience, all the things that you signed up for in digital transformation. But each one of those comes with, again, a transformation of your security approach. So even you know the steps you've taken to securely enable migration could become redundant if you go full steam ahead into one of these new modernized uh, transformative models of managing your business. So understanding how to find the balance between we're at the races here, we need to maintain velocity, the business is seeing some tremendous ROI from the adoption of cloud, whilst at the same time being able to evolve security at a pace that means you don't you know, create a, a significant risk to the business, absolutely critical. And then I think as you, as you get to the kind of later stages of your cloud journey, you've been there for a while, you, know, you understand what you're doing, now you're looking for those kind of more marginal gains that can still have a significant impact on the business. Is this the point in time where, for example, you might decide that your DIY strategy that got you through phase one or phase two, as it relates to security, that's just not a good you know, continued long-term investment for us as a business. We're thinking that maybe we want to offset some of that undifferentiated heavy lifting to a third party, and that could then you know, give us some efficiency gains. Great, might be the right time to do that. So it's a continuous process at that point of looking back and looking for improvements that can be made. And security is an area where there's a lot of uh, opportunity to continually iterate on, on your approach. All right, so I wanted to revisit the concept of the shared responsibility model and look at it through a different lens. So uh, this is really taking the concept of you know, uh, cloud provider responsibility, you know, what AWS is doing to protect the cloud itself that you're going to build upon, and then customer responsibility. And this is really translating it into you know, what we see as required capabilities that you're going to need to have solved for in order for you to be able to fully embrace the cloud. As you can see here, lots of words, and uh, some of those words might not be super familiar to you. So, yeah, this is really designed to help you understand that there's a lot there, right, that, that needs to be addressed. Now, there's multiple different approaches to addressing this, as we've spoken about. Uh, what I like to do when I'm talking to a customer is really kind of, you know, ask you to, to ask yourself, yeah, how do we feel about looking at this? And, and does it look like something overwhelming? Do you feel like, you know, having those capabilities in-house is going to be beyond you? Is that because you don't have, you know, the human resources? Is it because you have the human resources, but maybe they're not specialized enough in security? Is it because you don't have the tools? 
um, you know, if it's any of those things, then I think there's an opportunity for you to look at it and say, does it make sense for us to take all of this on on our own? Or do we need some help? And what flavor could that help come? And that's really kind of where Alert Logic steps in to say, there are large portions of this, the more complex uh, parts of this, that particularly kind of focus around the ingestion of data, the analytics of that data, or the analysis, should I say, of that data to determine if anything is happening that requires a response that could have a negative impact on your business and then really kind of enabling you to go make some decisions that can then uh, you know de-risk that situation for your business and kind of allowing you to free up the resources that would otherwise be doing that so you can move forward Jonathan so we have a, a purpose-built solution and, and as mentioned we've been you know supporting AWS customers all the way back to 2011 and have uh, yeah, enjoyed a, a really strong strategic relationship with AWS on the product development side throughout that journey so we've built a solution that's built on AWS, uh, but is made up of a bunch of proprietary technologies combined with our own analytics platform, again, built on AWS and human expertise that really allows us to integrate with an AWS environment. And that's not just in terms of integrating with uh, infrastructure services like ECS, uh, EKS, EC2, uh, for example, Fargate is a recent addition to, to the fold there in terms of platforms we can support, but also integration with a number of those tremendous services that Brendan highlighted to make sure that we have the absolute best uh, level of visibility and telemetry that we need to be able to then make some good decisions on your behalf. We're going to leverage our technology to give you complete visibility of the environments that you have within AWS um, so that you can see the assets that need to be protected and also get a good sense using configuration scanning, vulnerability scanning, etc., of what the current security posture is and if there are any misconfigurations or vulnerabilities that need to be addressed to kind of give you that strong foundation. Uh, and then layer on top of that, the ability to continuously detect and respond to threats to provide you then with security outcomes delivered by our security experts that help you precisely uh, address issues that we've identified. Those could be issues that would impact you from a security standpoint and you know, could lead to a breach or some form of reputational damage. Those could be issues that could have you drift from a compliant state uh, and therefore you know, uh, have you run the risk of uh, punitive actions from regulators or from customers or any, any kind of uh, negative outcome you can imagine there. And wrap that all up together into a full managed service uh, so that really you as the customer can just focus on receiving good intelligence, taking action uh, and having peace of mind. Um, you can move on from there, Jonathan. And this is really how, you know, deploying AlertLogic MDR standalone um, really starts to then kind of layer on top of that set of capabilities. So as you can see a large chunk of those um, requirements that really kind of focus on the ingestion of data, the analytics of that data and translating that into actions that need to be taken in a kind of incident response um, uh, manner uh, is really kind of our sweet spot. Now, as you can see there, there's still a number of areas that are left to you as the customer. Uh, those are really a combination of two things, predominantly um, you know, how you're going to go kind of enforce policies around who has access to what and how are we going to continue to ensure that the environments that we have in AWS and beyond are hardened and secured. Uh, and then also, you know, our standard version of our service really still puts the responsibility for remediating you know, any incident that we've escalated to you in the hands of you as the customer. Um, so we'll touch upon the next kind of stage of that that really kind of leverages mission to take even some of these remaining pieces off the table should that be required. But if you're going down the path of AlertLogic standalone and you can move on here, Jonathan, then you know, typically what it's going to do is allow you throughout your journey to be able to knock off a number of those key challenges. We're bringing the experts with us. You don't need to go and hire a whole team of, of dedicated AWS security experts. We can cover you in AWS, but also beyond. So if you do have environments that are outside of AWS on uh, you know, traditional platforms, other clouds, um, we have a single you know, solution that's gonna span across all of those and make sure that you can uh, continue your migration journey. But you know, for most folks, it's not a complete lift and shift, like we're just gonna take the entire business and go cloud tomorrow. It's a phase journey, so making sure you have complete coverage across that journey as you are you know, leaning towards all in on AWS, making sure that you're going to remain com compliant throughout that journey. As you start to move into the modernization phase, allowing you to maintain velocity by making sure that we can keep a handle on best practices and eliminate any situations where you might be manufacturing your own vulnerabilities by misconfiguring the environment. And uh, you know, the, the beauty and, and one of the you know, wonderful things about AWS is just the culture of innovation and how fast they bring new services and new capabilities to the table. But with that, uh, best practices is, is very fluid, right? It's a continual moving target uh, and being able to keep an eye on, you know, uh, what it looks like to, to have a gold standard environment is something that you typically need help with. We can help you there. And just making sure that we're doing everything we can to keep, you know, you trucking towards those uh, modernization goals. And then obviously as you start to 
embrace that and, and look for optimization opportunities. Uh, we've been a leader in, in container security really since that became a thing. Uh, we can align with any DevOps uh, kind of methodologies and, and systems that you put in place. Uh, and obviously making sure that we're continuing to stay abreast of all the new integration opportunities that AWS is offering up to us. So, uh, you know, we already have a number of uh, slated um, joint uh, development exercises that are going on this year that will, you know, obviously uh, align with new uh, services that AWS are bringing to bear as well as improvements to existing services. So packaging that all up into something that's easy to consume for your business and delivered as a service really is what we do. And then if you move on, Jonathan. As I mentioned, if that's still you know, requiring you to take on too much responsibility, then that's really where our collaboration with Mission comes in. And I'll leave it to Jonathan to go into the details, but we do have customers that, that say, hey, love everything you do, but I need to understand what to do with that output and I need resources that can go and take those actions. And hey, if that was also aligned with um, you know, an ability to manage my cloud platform for me overall and my environments for me overall, that would be a fantastic outcome. Then I can just go focus on my core competencies and leave all of the, uh, the the heavy lifting and the you know the expert work to, to you and Mission. So on that, Jonathan, I'll hand over and you can explain uh, how Mission MDR extends the value of Alert Logic. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dan. And I think um, you know it's a really great way for us to understand that there's lots of options here, right? The 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 primary goal for us is to uh, help you understand the breadth and depth of the challenge that you face uh, as an organization in, in the cloud. And um, you know, this is one other option, right? Dan gave, uh, you know, kind of the perspective uh, if you wanted to add on a layer with Alert Logic. Um, but we have actually partnered with Alert Logic and using our skills uh, and our core competencies as, you know, experts with AWS and best practices and managing infrastructure um, to really help you fill out more of that shared responsibility model and kind of offload as much as possible. Um, and so, well, what is uh, Mission MDR? Well, Mission MDR uh, follows that same people process tools uh, kind of outlined that uh, we spoke about earlier. Um, and the tools are really uh, alert logic here. Uh, and the people is a combination of alert logic's extremely skilled uh, security operations center uh, and Mission's extremely highly skilled uh, AWS cloud operations center. And so together we instrument your environment uh, with the Alert Logic platform, you get full access to it, just like you would if you uh, went directly with Alert Logic. Um, but the value here is that Mission has a team of 24/7 uh, AWS experts um, who have uh, would have access to your infrastructure to kind of help remediate anything that does happen. Um, so it's it's a pretty fantastic. Uh, uh, a platform and service that really helps you uh, kind of get that 24-7 coverage that you need with the right expertise and the right combination of people process tools. So what does it look like in action? So we've instrumented your environment with Alert Logic and a threat is detected. Uh, and that threat rises to the level of something critical that needs to be addressed as quickly as humanly possible. So uh, the Alert Logic SOC and the Mission Cloud Ops teams are uh, notified immediately, right? So that an alert happens and the threat begins to be evaluated by the Alert Logic team. And the Mission team uh, is there to provide context around the customer environment. And then we work together. So uh, the Alert Logic team will uh, kind of help us understand, hey, here's exactly what the threat looks like. Here are the steps that we need to take to remediate at a high level. Uh, and then we use our, our kind of 24-7 team uh, and our expertise with AWS to apply those recommendations uh, using best practices uh, to actually implement them and remediate in your environment. And uh, there you go, the threat is neutralized. And by the way, all of this could be happening at three in the morning while you're sleeping, right? Uh, and that's one of the big values here is uh, building out a 24-7 team uh, to kind of manage the threats that are going to emerge in your environment is very expensive and it's very difficult to operationalize. And that's why, uh, why Mission MDR is really such a great value, especially for uh, those of you who may have a more limited budget and can't uh, afford to build out or retain or attract these kind of security experts and AWS experts that can work together. So what does it look like? Um, well, not only are we behind the scenes responding to the threats and alerts, you get access to the incredible alert logic platform. And so you can see customizable dashboards that summarize the vulnerabilities, threats, incidents, and system health. 
uh, you get a very slick interface that actually is quite useful. It helps you get a topological map of your entire environment, and then you can drill into vulnerabilities kind of on a node-by-node -node basis or into containers and Docker hosts and things of that nature. Um, and once you drill down into that view, you actually get uh, a view on what those remediations need to be. Now, this is the same thing that our team is going to be using uh, in collaboration with the Alert Logic team to, to neutralize those threats. And you also get a, de a detailed list of kind of open incidents for us to work through with you, um, which can be very useful in kind of the initial phase to kind of understand uh, you know, where you at, are at. And then if you have multiple things all happening at the same time, which is not uncommon for attackers to kind of do multiple things at once to kind of keep you on your toes, uh, you get this kind of view of open incidents. In addition, you know, Dan really touched on kind of compliance. This is a significant thing for, for many of our customers and for many of you. Uh, we work with quite a lot of uh, healthcare and life sciences companies who have things like HIPAA uh, and uh, folks who uh, have you know, e-commerce and SaaS platforms that may have PCI uh, requirements or larger enterprises that need things like SOC2. Well, Alert Logic has a fantastic kind of compliance reporting uh, uh, feature as well that can really help you align to those standards. Um, and make sure that you're continuously compliant. Finally, you also get uh, another really fantastic kind of log search queryable security log uh, kind of tool built into the platform as well uh, that can also accelerate incident response. So uh, we really quickly want to give a uh, kind of case study uh, of uh, a, a customer who has just had a huge amount of success with the Alert Logic platform uh, in AWS specifically. Um, so the, the customer required uh, some pretty enterprise-grade security, but like we mentioned before, there's a lot of customers out there, a lot of businesses who just don't have uh, the resources in-house or the budget in-house to kind of fully staff this and build out uh, tools. Um, so they needed the security to be built out from the ground up, right? Not something that was an afterthought, something that was really designed in from the start. Uh, but they didn't want to slow down, right? They needed to innovate. They needed to focus on their core competencies and create value for their customers. Um, and they also needed to be sure that whatever they were committing to wasn't something that would become onerous over time. Uh, it needed to scale uh, both in terms of coverage and in terms of cost as the business grew. So what was delivered? Well, through implementing Alert Logic, um, they got kind of that 24-7 MDR uh, at, at a price they could afford, fit in their budget. They didn't have to hire uh, any full-time folks to staff a 24-7 a, you know, security team. And they were able to focus on uh, building their product uh, rather than uh, having to manage the day-to-day the -day on the security issues. Uh, and they got that security by design mindset, right? They, they were not thinking of it as an afterthought. It was a core part of what they do. Um, they leveraged all the security knowledge and automation, uh, AWS experts and technology to get there. And I really love um, this quote from the CISO of All of Us Financial. With MDR, we save time by only having to deal with the curated security issues that are thrown our way. My team can focus on what's most important to our business, delivering the best product as fast as possible. Uh, and I imagine a lot of you are in the same situation. You really want to delight your customers. You want to provide them with incredible experience. You want to make sure you're creating value for them. And you don't want to be uh, bogged down by, and I'll use an AWS terminology here, undifferentiated heavy lifting, right? Things that maybe are outside of your core competencies and uh, whereas you really want to focus in on your product. So all of us is a great example here. So um, the last thing I want to point out is that while Mission is uh, a security uh, conscious business and we do a lot of MDR, um, we also have other services that we provide so that we can give you even more coverage. So uh, similar to uh, you know, that un undifferentiated heavy lifting around managing your uh, kind of cost optimization and your alignment with best practices and governance. Um, if you need help monitoring and managing your environment, uh, you know, developing run books, monitoring uh, with tools like New Relic, um, we provide that as well and 24-7 AWS support uh, along with that. And finally, we have a, a service that we offer which gives you continuous improvement um, around your environment, we call it managed DevOps. Uh, and it's really useful. So as, as you have uh, you know, things that arise either through operations or through MDR, um, those recommendations flow out to your managed DevOps team and you get an expert AWS consultant who kind of prioritizes those things in a roadmap and burns that down with you with our team of engineers. Finally, 
one-off projects, anything that you need. If you want a security assessment, you need to do a migration to AWS, infrastructure as code, CI, CD, modernization. We have a whole PS team that uh, is, is staffed with some really amazing folks, uh, engineers who do some really wonderful work. So that gets to kind of our last section here. And I want to uh, first acknowledge there's some good questions that have already rolled in. I see one from Jennifer uh, and a couple others as well. So thank you for sharing those questions. Um, and right before we dive into the questions, I just want to uh, you know, call out again that we have some handouts attached uh, and some data sheets and eBooks. Um, and this is sort of a special offer that we wanna to provide to all of you who are in attendance today. Uh, we want to give you a kind of complimentary one-hour security consultation um, and we can kind of dive in with our experts and help you understand a little bit about your specific needs and we can kind of recommend uh, what might be a good fit for you whether it is hey you need to em employ these specific AWS services uh, and kind of handle that on your own um, or if we believe that you would benefit from alert logic or if we think you would benefit from kind of the full coverage uh, from mission MDR. Um, in addition AWS uh, may be able to qualify you for some 30-day free trials of things like Guard Duty, Security Hub, and Amazon Protective. Um, like we said, there is a huge spectrum of options available to you, and uh, we're really excited to have that conversation. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and dive into questions. So the first one comes from Jennifer, and it is, what is a reasonable strategy if we do not have a large budget? I think we've addressed this to a degree, but I would love it if uh, Dan or, or, or Brendan, if you would chime in here. Sure. Brendan, you want to go first? Sure. I'll, I'll chime in quickly. Um, so first of all, great question. Uh, you know, I think uh, even with infinite budget, it's sometimes tough to entirely solve a security problem, but with a limited budget, it's even tougher. Um, so all the services that I showed you, um, the, the, it, the pricing varies a lot from customer to customer, but for the most part, on average, we see customers that adopt like virtually every single one of those services I represent. You saw many of them on the slide that in the, in the red uh, icons. It should be about, uh, again, on average, and it, this will vary a lot, but it's 4% of your AWS bill. So if you're spending you know, $10,000 a month, you can expect to spend 4% of that, which is 400 bucks a month um, with those services. And they're designed to be Kind of relatively cost effective we're not necessarily looking for a way to like really you know grow revenue we're more trying to um give you the tooling to make aws the desired place for you to micro uh, migrate your workloads and so i would encourage you to look at some of the native tools that are again uh, very inexpensive um when you get to the uh the, the the most expensive part of any sort of security program is invariably the people it's tough to hire people it's tough to retain good security talent, especially cloud security talent these days. And it's it, that, that ends up being the biggest, usually one of the biggest costs and one of the biggest challenges in terms of getting kind of the return on your investment, which is why I would really encourage you as the next step to take the one hour complimentary uh, security uh, 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 consultation with the Mission Cloud Security Architect. So at least you have a roadmap, again, no cost there. Of, hey, here are the places you should really focus. And you can make the business decision do I want to take this on myself? Do I want to get some help? And we've got all the right people here that can help. <clears throat> Excellent. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with absolutely everything you said, Brendan. I mean, one thing I do see happen a lot is, and, and well, firstly, I don't think I've ever been in a situation where I've been given more budget than I needed. So typically <laughs> you're given, <laughs> you know, right on the line, right? So trying to work out, you know, firstly, you know, truly what's the kind of total cost of ownership of whatever it is that you're planning to spend that money on, right? One of the traps I see people fall into a lot with security is I have this much money to buy something, which is great. Okay. How are you actually going to get to the outcomes that that thing you're going to buy is proposed and have you really kind of considered that? Um, so, you know, if it looks like there's a whole bunch of additional cost outside of that budget that's going to come from other parts of the business to try and get you to a point uh, where you're getting the outcomes that you're hoping to get from that technology investment, that's a good trigger to, to maybe look at, okay, is there a different way of approaching this that's maybe going to take away some of that additional expense and spend um, that isn't necessarily just tied to the purchase price and again, we can kind of help with that. Um, so that's one key piece. The other thing I would say is, is go take a look at, you know, if you're looking at more of an outcomes based solution like what we would provide or what Mission MDR would provide in collaboration with us, how much is that going to save you somewhere else? And can you start to factor some of that into the decision making process and go and build maybe more of a collaborative business case? I see a lot of uh, very lean security teams kind of living or dying by the budget they've been given to make security technology investments when in essence, the whole company is going to benefit if they do it right. So you know, one thing, and using the, the example of um, all of us financial, 
you know, one of the things that CISO loved there was the fact that, you know, even the, the small amount of time that his team was previously being required to spend on security, that had been reduced down to, you know, minutes and hours versus, you know, multiple hours a week. Uh, and he got to take all of that time and go and put that time back into revenue generating activity and development work and, and other things. So be collaborative. Look, look how far and wide you can kind of look at the value uh, of what you're going to do is going to reach and try and get more people involved in the business case. And you might be able to tease out a little bit more money that way by the savings you're going to make elsewhere. So, Yeah, that's very well said, Dan. And that's definitely something when we, we're talking with our customers, you have to understand that uh, focusing on your core competencies and creating value for your customers is going to generate more revenue for the business. And ultimately, right. you know, people often think about security as a cost center and and it really is a, a way to kind of, especially if you are able to leverage partners and tools and services externally, helps you focus, helps you uh, really make sure you're driving revenue and value for your customer. Um, and so we have one more question, but before we address it, I want to go ahead and put up our final poll. Um, which is a little bit about understanding uh, uh, what, what you got out of this uh, uh, you know, kind of webinar and where you think you are in your cloud journey. And while this is running, because I think we're uh, running short on time, I'll let, I'll let everyone kind of answer the polls. Um, but I, I do want to address uh, the one last question that we have time um, to kind of address, which is uh, what's the number one thing every organization should do to prevent ransomware in the cloud? And I'll give kind of a start to this uh, um, kind of response here. Uh, and, and that is that um, you, you absolutely need to uh, apply uh, the tools in place and then actually monitor them and look at them, right? Ransomware is uh, a very easy thing to fall into a trap. Um, and I think leveraging a lot of the, the things that we've talked about in this, in this uh, kind of webinar is, are, is a really good first step. But uh, Dan or Brendan, do you have anything else to add to that? I'll go first this time, if you like, Brendan. I think two things for me, uh, one, education and awareness, right? I think you know, ransomware is, is a classic example of a, uh, uh, you know, a security um, issue. Sorry, now my door's gone and my dogs are going nuts. But uh, if, you're, if your users and, and the employees in your organization don't understand um, you know, what they're to do and what they're not to do, then that's going to be a big issue and they'll likely fall into the trap. The second is visibility. If you can't see it, you can't protect it, and somebody else will find it and do something bad with it. So on that, I will uh, go and address the dogs in the door. <laughs> so uh, over to you, Brendan. Thanks, Dan. Um, you know, I think everything that Dan and, and Jonathan mentioned agree 100%. Um, it's, it's a difficult problem to solve after the fact. Uh, everyone, um, I hear all the time, uh, there's no silver bullet in security. There is kind of a silver bullet for ransomware, um, yeah. which is a great, backup strategy like if you can do that and execute that flawlessly you basically solve the problem however it's not easy to execute that flawlessly don't get me wrong so if you don't have that uh, and you are in a position where either there's an infection or it's starting to run throughout mm -hmm. your environment that visibility is super important that tooling is very important and the people and, and process to act on it's important but boy you know of all the issues in information security this is the one that i think the industry actually does have a decent fingerprint on yeah. addressing holistically which is if you do a, a flawlessly executed backup strategy you will not have nearly the magnitude of ransomware issues in your environment <clears throat> yeah. always always better to be able to restore to a good state right and and uh, uh that's absolutely a great point if, if i had to re-answer the question that's the answer i would give <laughs> um so <laughs> We are, we are a little over time here, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up, but it's been an absolute pleasure, uh, as usual, Dan and Brendan, and uh, you know the results of that poll uh, was that 83% of you say that you'd like uh, additional help managing your environment. So I absolutely encourage you to visit missioncloud.com slash AWS security review with hyphens, um, and let us give you that one hour complimentary uh, kind of session. You can also call us, uh, you see that number on the screen. And we'll try to follow up after this uh, webinar, webinar wraps up with some other ways to contact us. So thanks again. Um, and here's to a more secure business. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.